Today, we're answering the question, why do we worship? Welcome to the Pursuit, a Cross Point City Church podcast that pursues a deeper dive into the scripture from last week's sermon. I'm James Griffin, the lead pastor here at Cross Point City Church, and today's podcast is going to be a little different, but before we get into that, I want to give a quick recap from this week's sermon. We talked about the topic of worship from John chapter 12, and I started by by referencing this speech given by a guy named David Foster Wallace. He was a novelist, and he was speaking at a graduation for Kenyon College, and he said that everybody worships. Everybody worships, and the only choice we get is what to worship. And so the decision we all have to make is will we worship God or will we worship something in the place of God? And the second decision, the latter, it's something known as idolatry. Idolatry is when we worship something in God's place. And the danger of that, according to Wallace, is that thing will eat us alive. And ultimately, whatever we worship in place of God will become like that thing empty, lifeless, spiritually dull in every way. But on the other hand, when we worship God, we become like him. Uh, We become full of life, full of joy, full of peace. And so what we did out of John 12 is we looked at this beautiful example of worship. This is where we find the story of Mary anointing the feet of Jesus And she wipes his feet down with her hair. It's this really strange and scandalous act. But but Jesus calls it a beautiful thing. And what he's doing is recognizing this act as an act of worship. And I said it in the sermon. I'll say it again. But I would add an adjective into that and say it was a shameless act of worship. Because in this moment, Mary didn't care about what her actions looked like. She didn't care about what anybody thought All she cared about was expressing the depths of her love for Jesus Christ. I gave this quote from Charles Spurgeon, I love this, that what Mary did was the deed of a soul all on fire, the deed of a woman filled with deep devotion and reverent love. So I made the point out of that that Mary's worship was a response, that it was a response. She didn't come to Jesus looking to receive anything. She came simply responding to who he was and what he had already done in her life. And ultimately, that is what worship is. It's a response. It's you and me responding to who Jesus is, what he's done in our lives. And we don't just respond in moments. We respond every moment of every day. So in other words, worship is a lifestyle. And I ultimately kept bringing the sermon back to one question, and it's worth asking again on the podcast, is your soul on fire? In response to who Christ is and what he's done for you, Is your soul on fire and are you filled with such deep devotion and reverent love that all you care about is expressing your love for him by the way that you live? And so that's a question we wanna keep wrestling with today on the podcast as we talk about the topic of worship. And so I thought it would be fun today to have all of our worship leaders from our various locations join me for this conversation. And so here they are. And I'm not going to introduce you. I'm going to make you introduce yourselves, okay? And so let's just take a moment. Let's go around. I, I was going to say the room, but it's not, the it's not really. Let's go around the stage, <laughs> yeah, yeah. the circle, and let's introduce ourselves. Tell us uh, who you are. Tell us your name. Where do you lead? Which location? How long you've been on the team? You want to go first? I'll do Come it. Come on, Clay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tee us up. Yeah, so my name's Clay. Um, I am at our Rome location, so shout out Rome. Yeah. Um, I, I'm very biased, uh, but <laughs> hands down, best location, hands down. Uh, You're like a longtime Rome guy. Yes. <laughs> so it's yes. not just the location, it's the city of Rome. Right, right. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, so I'm, I'm born and raised. I'm from, from Rome. Yep, yep. So, yeah. I love it. Um, so I've been on staff for two years in July. Yep. So I'm one month shy of two years. So really excited. Mm. Crazy, dude. Uh, yeah. It's almost been two years. Yeah, I know. That's amazing. Yeah. I love that. That's so, awesome. Very exciting. Heck yeah, man. Yeah. All right, we've got a we got an old timer next to you. Yeah, I'm pretty old. This man. guy, this guy's been around forever. <laughs> yeah. So my name's Marcus. Uh, I get the privilege of leading at our Adairsville location, and uh, I've been uh, at our Adairsville spot for uh, two and a half years. Been on staff, but have been with Cross Point since summer of 2006. Yeah. Since Long you were like time. you were like eight years old, right, or something was, like that. I was 15. <laughs> That's so Not crazy. Eight, 15 but... years old. Man. That is so crazy. Dude. Almost 16. You've yeah. been around for a minute. And say again, how long you've been on staff now? Uh, two and a half years. Two so, and a half years. Uh, okay. January of 2021. Love that. When I started. 
So awesome. good, man. Yeah. That's Love awesome. it. That's All right, last but not least. And then my name is Cameron. I lead our Cartersville Worship. Um, and I've been on staff, started as an intern almost two years ago. And I joined as a part-time staff um, last Easter. Love that. Yeah. So gosh, man, two year, almost two years, a little over two years, almost two years. Yep. I didn't realize we're a, fairly, we're, we're a new team. We, yeah. all, brought, we yeah. were all brought you Pretty on fresh. about the same time. <laughs> start up. That is so good, man. I love that. I love that. Well, um, I, I want to ask you this question because I know that God is doing significant things across the board, every location. Yeah. It's just been so incredible to see God work and move in all of our cities. So I just want to hear your perspectives, okay? Yeah. What is God doing at each of your locations? Mm. Well, yeah, I'll... I'll I'll, I'll kick it off, man. So in, in Rome, it's been absolutely incredible. Mm. And so, which first, before I get into anything, I have to shout out our kids' ministry. Mm. Okay. Because I have, I have had a few different meetings over the last couple months. Yeah. And when I'm talking to people, it's like, oh, so you come to Rome, awesome, you're loving Crosspoint, it's exciting. What's, what's keeping you here? Mm. You know, what, what is it? You know, what's, why did you choose Crosspoint City? Yeah, yeah. And kids' ministry is what I hear so frequently. That's awesome. Where people are saying that their kids are coming home and they're actually having conversations about what they learned. Yeah. That's so you know, it, it, it's, it wasn't just, you know, candy and giveaways and fun. All that stuff's a part of it. Yeah, yeah. But the the deep conversations and there's it, things are clicking with their kids. Yeah. 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 And so I've, I've, I've I had so many conversations. I would love to say it's, oh, the music's great. You know, the, the preaching's <laughs> awesome. You know, something like that. But just kids ministry is yeah. just doing yeah. absolutely incredible. That's so I wanted so to give cool. that shout out. Um, but what we're seeing in Rome and something I'm so excited for is the amount of talented people yeah. that God mm-hmm. is bringing to our location. So yeah. not just musicians, that's, that's great. Right. But across all of our serve teams, across every, every part mm-hmm. of what we're doing, yeah. Yeah. just yeah. the amount of talent that God is bringing mm-hmm. is absolutely incredible. And that's of course, so cool. you know, we're, we're, seeing, we're seeing growth and it's, there's, the baptisms we've seen have yeah. been absolutely mm-hmm. incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And so what we're, we're seeing people get baptized and then people in their families getting baptized the next month. That's so yeah. cool. Which that's just, cool. just shows what's, what's happening yeah. there. You know, it's... It, it's it's incredible. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Marcus, I know things are are booming in Adairsville right now. Dude, it's rocking and rolling, man. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's been great. So uh, it, it, I kind of have to go back a little bit to really try to paint a picture of what God has been doing because it's, it's more than just recently because we launched in 2019 in the fall. And then six months later, the t- pandemic hurt around the world yeah. happened and we shut down as a six-month-old church plant. Yeah. So. I mean, you ask anybody, you know, statistics would probably say that it would have shut down completely. But yeah. it's it, especially even in a post COVID world. Now we see things where churches still haven't recovered yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. from that and churches are still closing their door. But we've experienced the complete opposite of that. Yeah. So we launched in 2019, shut down for six <laughs> months, uh, moved uh, venues twice. And we are seeing God work like I've never seen before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's been amazing. Like people coming to faith. Clay was talking about baptisms. Like we we had a guy last week who is actually on our production team. His name's Mac, and love him to death. But that dude took a step of faith and 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 got baptized last mm. week as a grown man, leading his family in love that. that. So good. That's been. It's just been incredible. You know, we're you know God's bringing people to the location. Like just about every week we're seeing record numbers. Yeah. Just yeah. people coming that have never, uh, whether they've never been in church or they have distanced themselves from the church yeah. mm-hmm. from uh, for one reason or another. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're coming back. Yeah. And just relationally, things are incredible. Praise God for great. that. So good, man. Yeah. 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 Nothing, nothing really happening here in Cartersville. <laughs> nothing, nothing new. No. I, I mean, you know this. It, it, since New Year's, I would say, the past six months, the Cartersville congregation has grown immensely. Yeah. Um, the teams here in Cartersville are growing. Um, I mean, talk about kids ministry. They are growing. Yeah. Um, our team here, our worship team has definitely, definitely been growing so much. Um, it's been so awesome to lead that team and to bring on new people who are just so passionate for worship. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I just look around and literally Every week there is there is new people, more people coming. Um, the, the talk about baptisms, the baptisms every month have been yeah. radical. Um, but yeah, I would say yeah, nothing new, but yeah, yeah definitely <laughs> incredible um, move of God. Yeah, yeah, I, I I love what you just said, move of God, and I think that yeah. really is the only way to explain 
what is happening mm -hmm. across our locations. Right. Yeah. You know, people ask me all the time, like, what are you guys doing at Cross Point? <laughs> and I'm like, I, I don't know, like nothing yeah. crazy. I, I think we, we try to go all out in worship and we're preaching the word every week and we care deeply about the mission of Jesus and yeah. serving suffering people. And uh, the way that I keep saying it, I, I think God is just being really kind to us. Yeah, yeah. he yeah. is. And I think the moment we, we try to take any credit for what's happening here is the moment we're all in trouble. But I just praise God for what he's doing. And, and I say only God. Yeah. Only God, man. So, uh, and I appreciate all of you for leading so well at your respective locations. But here's what's cool. Last night, you all got to lead together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, we can't not talk about this. All right? <laughs> we have to. Preached on worship this weekend. Last night, we did a night of worship, and man, I talked to several of our longtime people who said, best night of worship ever. Yeah. Favorite night of worship ever. And I have to agree. Mm. I think it was mm. the best one we've done. I think it was probably my favorite one that we've done. Mm. It was incredible what happened in this room that we're sitting in as people from all three of our cities came together to worship. Yeah. And so, uh, man, it was a long day. How are you feeling after yesterday? Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> a little sleepy. Yeah. A little bit. Worn um, out. Just a little bit. But what about some highlights? Oh, Talk yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sore, first sore? of all. Yeah. Yes, I'm so sore. My calves. <laughs> well, it's because you're jumping around up here. I, like, it, it is, it, so, talking about highlights. Yeah, okay, yeah. so, towards the end of the night, we're getting, everything's hype. We're going crazy. It's, yeah, it's, we are. It's awesome. Um, and I look around. out, and I see it's the second or third row right here in front of me, and people are just jumping. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, okay, all yeah. right, we're, we're going off. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's happening. Yeah. And my calves are yeah. now <laughs> hating me. Are paying uh, for it. Yes. <laughs> yes. By the time we got to that last bridge of graves in the gardens, I took my ears out. I was like, I don't need these anymore. I'm just going to jump <laughs> around and uh, do my that. thing. But no, yeah, it was amazing. I mean, you know, the energy we had on stage, you know, was just a reflection of what was going on in the congregation. Mm -hmm. um, we yeah. were happy. We were ha having a great mm -hmm. time. We had been that whole day. Um, but the people out there were just like, like just giving us that energy. And it was so awesome. And yeah. you could tell that everybody that came was ready to worship, oh, was yeah. ready to like oh, yeah. what you said, give it their all and kind That's of right. do what Mary did. And, you know, be shameless and, and uh, worship in just a way that was, you know, yeah. free. Yeah. 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 We talked about that before we started the podcast. So like, dude, people were in Immediately. from the start last yes. night. Yeah. You know, we, we yeah. did a part of a song we've never, we've never done here before gratitude. Mm -hmm. And we just sang a small portion of it, you know, like bridge and of courses. Mm -hmm. But it's like as soon, as soon, Clay, as mm -hmm. soon as you started singing, mm -hmm. it was like everybody's in, on their feet, yeah. Yeah. hands raised, yeah. singing loud. Yeah. And that's what I love about nights like that yeah. is that the people who come, I mean, they come because they, they want that. They're yeah. hungry for that. Yeah. And, and you could sense it right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, man, well, it was so good. Yeah, with the way, so your message, the way that it set it up, I mean, mm -hmm. it just, because we, we planned this, months ago yeah. right so but the way it just and it just goes back to it's just god yeah. just how just everything he's doing is so incredible and the way you set the message up for the very first thing mm. that we say yeah so as soon as the countdown timer hits zero the very first thing we say is oh come on my soul don't you get shy on yeah me. there you go yeah. bro. you know that's just it. like that that's just it. to oh, oh man yeah. yeah that just gives me chills Same. you know yeah. like yeah yeah let's just not care let's just go for yeah. it tonight right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and during yeah. the acoustic response portion mm. Uh, and we're, we're playing and there was, there was a woman who came down and was kneeling at the front. She was praying and there's a, a little girl that came up and I, I assume it was her daughter, um, but a little girl came up. She was maybe eight or 10, something like yeah. that. And so the, the woman's praying, she's you know, eyes closed, heads down, just, just really in, in, in that moment. And, and this girl comes, comes right behind her, puts her hand on her shoulder and is, is right wow. there. And just mm. seeing once again, I'm assuming a little bit here that it was a mother and daughter, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. But seeing that the mother take that step mm. of no, I'm, I'm walking down because I think she was she was one of the first to yeah. to yeah. really kind of make that make that move, right? And it was just it was just so encouraging. Mm. You know, yeah. we're we're playing through we're playing through the stuff and trying to remember what we're doing and making sure you <laughs> yeah. know there's just a lot of stuff going on in our heads, yeah. you know. <laughs> but to see that it immediately calmed. Yeah. Every nerve, any whatever anxiety I may have been feeling yeah. in that moment, it was just like, no, this is this is what we're here for. That's we're just yeah. here to worship exactly right. and just yep. just come to His feet. Yeah, yep. you know, yep. yeah, it's so it, good. It was pretty amazing just to 
Like, kind of to tag on that a little bit, talking about people's kids coming up and worshiping. Like, my daughter was in the audience. She's seven. Mm. And afterwards, she told me that it was great. I got to, mm. to do the motions we do in our class on <laughs> Sunday mornings. Me oh, and my friend so Aria good. got to do it. Like, we, she was so excited. I was just like, man, that's, yeah. that, that's just amazing. But also, yeah. looking out from here and being able to see faces that are both at Cartersville, Rome, and Adairsville. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I see people, I'm like, I know God just did an incredible, just restorative work in their marriage. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know this person uh, has been pray- had been praying for a baby, and now their baby girl is like mm. six months old now. Mm. Wow. It took them forever to have a baby, and but God answered their prayer. Mm. Seeing people who had uh, struggled with addiction yep. for so much of their life had been thrown in the jail. Now they're out and God's just been doing incredible work in him and his family's wife mm. in life. And yeah. uh, just seeing all these people with their hands just thrown up. So yeah. God, thank you for yeah. delivering me from what it was I was facing. That's yeah. so that powerful. Moment. It was incredible. Yeah. I, I talked to, I, I, I mean, I just sat up here on the front of the stage last night and hung out till everybody was gone, just talking to folks. And Marcus, I love what you said. I had this one guy come up to me and, you know, during that acoustic response time, he and, he and his friend who invited him to church, uh, I don't know, like six, seven months ago, are down on their mm. knees just praying, right? So the dude comes up to me afterwards and tears in his eyes. He's like, I just wanna say thank you guys for wow. what you do at Crosspoint. And, and he said, God's changed my life. He's changing my marriage. He's changing my family. Wow. I mean, grown man, right? Saying yeah. this to me. And then his buddy who invited me said a year ago, I would have never dreamt. Mm that that guy would be here saying all that right now. Like God's wow. radically changed his life. I was talking to another sweet couple who've been in our church for a really long time and they've experienced the loss of a grandchild recently. Yeah. The wife yeah. is going through some major health issues yeah. and they were here last night and she was just sharing with me like, dude, God is so good. Wow. Even in the midst of it, God is so good and we had to be here tonight to yeah. give him praise. So yeah, what the Lord's doing in the lives of our people. Yeah. Golly, yeah. man. It, it blows me away. And to know that he allows us just to set the table right, yeah. for people week after week, yep. like, right? Yeah. And he includes us in that. It's broken, so humbling. Broken, so humbling. Pe- it's so humbling. Yeah. Yeah. Broken people like us. So yeah. it's unreal. Yeah. Well, let me, let, me, uh, let me change gears for a minute. And Cameron, I know you want to speak to this, so I'm going to tee you up, okay? <laughs> um, here at Crosspoint, and not a lot of people know this, but I think it matters that people know stuff like this. But here at Crosspoint, we call you worship teachers, so we don't just say that you're worship leaders. We say that the three of you are worship teachers, along mm-hmm. with other people that serve on your teams. Yeah. And I know that might not seem like a big deal on the surface to a lot of people. It's just semantics. It's just language. But it's significant, yeah. I think, that we've landed on that language. Yeah. And so, Cameron, can you, can you talk a little bit about why we landed there, the significance of it? And if you guys want to chime in and add anything, feel free. Yeah, so... We all talk about, you know, worship leaders, worship worship teachers. Something that we tell our teams all the time is you are a worship leader. So whoever's playing bass, they're a worship leader. They are leading um, along with the people on the stage, the congregation and worship. Um, And so I think that that term worship teacher is significant because it usually is talking about one specific person. And when we're on the stage, we usually call ourselves worship teachers, Uh, but it's usually just one specific person who is teaching our band and the congregation worship in a different way than the the bass player or the drum player might be doing it. Um, And they are teaching the congregation what it means to worship, what it looks like to worship. Mm. Um, You know, we we share scriptures on stage and they are, they are partaking in that because they're using that to teach worship to our congregation Um, because everybody on, on the stage, and, and our team is a worship leader. And yeah. so we, we found it good to use more specific language to talk about that one person on the stage who is kind of taking a little bit more leadership and ownership of, yeah. of the worship. That's really good. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. I, I, just to uh, kind of add to that, it, it really is all going towards what our mission statement is, mm. that we relentlessly pursue those far from God to help them know and follow Jesus. And we're doing that through worship. We're doing that through music. Yeah. Uh, and, and like Cameron was saying, like we're, we're teaching scripture from platform. We're, we're talking about the significance of certain lines and songs from platform and, and, yeah. and, and just helping to give people a glimpse of like, what, what is it that God has done 
for us. And yeah. just a reminder, mm. like, this is why we sing. This is why we worship him. You know, we, we, we are his creation. We're beautifully, we are wonderfully made. Yeah. He holds us above all other creation. And, and we have reason to, to respond in that way because the tomb is empty yeah, because we amen. have yeah. access That's to right. him. So we want to teach people in, in as, in as many ways as, as possible for them to be able to understand that. So, yeah. um, being able to teach them in that way. And also like does, uh, as a worship teacher, the, does the way that we respond here on this platform reflect the joy and hope that we have in Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Right. So yeah. Um, it, it's okay to get rowdy when you sing. It's kind of <laughs> like I like we to encourage say. it. So. Yes and amen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think it all just comes back to the why. Mm. You know, it's, yeah. it's, you know, sing. I feel like sometimes we, we can get kind of wrapped up in the person that's singing the song. They're the ones that's leading the song. Mm. You know, right. and, and, and not, you know, not getting into that, but there's, when, when you take that, because words, words matter and language yeah. matters. They do, yeah. And so even just changing that from leader to teacher, to me, that takes, that makes me go, well, hold on. What's, what's required of me? Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, if if you schedule me for this, what does that mean? (laughs) And we want people to have to, to stop and go, no, what, what is this? What does this mean? Mm -hmm. Because we don't just want to get into the routine and the habit. Yeah. Oh, we're just, we're just getting up here and we're singing the songs and we're doing that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We really want to make sure that we're teaching why? Yep. Why are we singing? What do these lyrics mean? Because yeah. some, some of the songs, they, they can feel good and they're fun and they're upbeat and we're jumping around and all that. Yeah. Yeah. But if we miss the, the impact these lyrics have and the, the truths that we're actually declaring with our mouths, yep. Yep. if we miss that, yep. we've missed the whole point. That's yeah. right. That's and so, right. so to, to be a worship teacher is to help show people that there, there are so many layers underneath yeah. what yeah. we're doing. Yeah. 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 Well, that's what I appreciate yeah. so much about what the three of you do is it's more than just music, you know? It's more than just, oh, we're gonna sing songs because that's what we do in church. Yeah. And the reality is, and, and I know you, you preach this, right? That worship is so much more than music. Mm-hmm. It's a lifestyle. Music is one of the ways that we express our worship. And it's one of my favorite ways, by right. the way. Yeah. I, love, <laughs> I love expressing I like worship through song, <laughs> but it's, it's just one of the ways we do it. And so to know that the three of you are thinking very intentionally mm. about how we teach our church to respond in music rightly to who Christ is, to the good news of the gospel. It matters immensely. Mm. And again, I think our people should walk in every week with that right understanding as well. Yeah. And so to know that if they don't, we're gonna force it upon you, um, right? Like yeah. the three of you are gonna make sure <laughs> that we're teaching you and, yeah. and we're calling you to worship in the right way and for the right reasons. Yeah. I'm just grateful for that because anybody yeah. can get them to sing songs, but, but we just want more for our people. Than yeah. That. yeah. And I was even going to mention because you, you mentioned um, yesterday about, or Sunday, um, how worship is a lifestyle. Mm. It's not just singing songs. Yeah. Um, it's not even just coming down to the altar. It's a lifestyle. And that impacts the way we schedule on yeah. a Sunday or, or on a Thursday, who we put in that worship teacher position. It greatly matters what their lifestyle is like. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, if there's someone who they don't, they're not living a worship lifestyle, it's, we're not going to really schedule them as a worship teacher because they're not able to teach worship because mm. they're not living it out. Yeah. 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 Hey, I think that's a great segue into the next question because one of the things I love about Mary in John 12 is that she was a worshiper. Mm. Um, you, you see this woman by her life worshiping Jesus And so I I wanted to ask you guys, like the thing that I love so much about Mary is that she didn't care what anybody thought. Mm. Man, and that's just so good, right? Like in this crowded room of people, I'm gonna let my hair down, I'm pouring out expensive ointment, I'm touching his feet, like Mm -hmm. everything about that was wrong socially. But she's like, I don't care. I just wanna express my love for Jesus. And so I just wanted to ask the three of you, as, as worship teachers, and again, you can think about this on the platform or you can think about it off the platform, I don't care. But here's the question I wanted to ask. Like, is there a time or can you think of a time in your life where you responded like that? Like you knew, maybe God was prompting you to act out in a certain way in worship, okay? And you knew this is probably gonna look a little strange, a little scandalous, but I don't care, I'm gonna do it anyway. Has there ever been a moment like that for you? <laughs> oh, they're all pointing at Cameron. Cameron's excited. Right, here we go. Um, Let's go. 
Yeah, I mean, there's multiple. I mean, in a personal one, I think about the time, you know, me and my husband found out we were pregnant with our first baby. And I swear if anybody had looked in her house, they would have literally seen hooping and hollering and jumping and screaming. And uh, yeah, but, um, and but, hold on, hold on. Let's yeah. not rush past this. Camera. You, gotta <laughs> stay here for a second. You, yeah. you, you talk about that. Like that was years and years ago. It feels a while ago. This was like weeks ago. <laughs> this was like two months ago. There's yeah. probably a lot of people in our church that don't know this, yeah, but I'm pregnant. you are pregnant. <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah. So if you see me jumping around, say a prayer for me. That's um, right. You know, pray yeah, for me. Yeah, but. So yeah, pray for her every Sunday morning because yes. it's been rough. It recently. has been rough. Yeah, 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 yeah the yeah. Lord. I mean, I, I can't. Every every Sunday, it's a blessing that I can do this. But if, lately, it's been, <laughs> you know, a blessing that I'm able to stand yeah, yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. able to yeah. lead on the gatherings. And yeah, you know, if you see me and I'm looking okay, you know, just say thank you. <laughs> say thank you to the Lord. Yeah, that's all Him. That's right. Um, but yes, and uh, on the platform, I'd say. I think about this one time where I was just so like hit with the reality of who I am and Je who Jesus is. Mm. And the fact that like you always say like, how am I able to do what I do? Mm. And uh, I was supposed to lead the last song and um, thankfully I had one of my girls, Harley was leading with me and I just said, hey, can you like, I was like, I cannot lead the song. Can you lead the song? I have to mm. go pray. I have mm. to go. And I literally went off to the side and I wept because we, that, that worship went on for a while. Mm. Um, you know, good 30 minutes longer than it was supposed to, but I just sat in the corner and I wept and mm. I sang and I cried for like 45 minutes while that song went on. And you know, that I, I knew people were probably going to be like, why isn't she leading the song? Like what's she <laughs> what's doing over there? What's wrong with that girl? What's, yeah. what's wrong? Why is she, why is she so emotional? Yeah. And, and I even knew the people on my, I was leading the people on my team were going to be like, you know, why isn't she leading the song or whatever? But I just yeah. knew that if I did not get down on my knees right now and put that mic down and pray and just mm. weep for, of Thanksgiving, I, you know, yeah. I wasn't doing what the Lord called me to yeah. do in that yeah. moment. Yeah. So mm. that's yeah. good. Yeah. What about you guys? I had a moment when I was in high school. I was probably like 16 years old, and our SEA held uh, some type of like worship night kind of uh, concert thing in our school auditorium. And I was a part of SEA, but like I, I did, you know, fellowship Christian athletes, but I wasn't an athlete. They just said that anybody can come just <laughs> so we have more people in the room. Yeah, and yeah. They said, you get a free chicken biscuit when you come. Hey, like, bro, let's oh, go, man. Let's go. Like, so, that don't yeah. bring anybody. Um, but uh, so me and my me and my friend attend uh, the thing. They're like, okay, yeah, it's gonna have a band, have live music. And at that time, I just started playing like electric guitar. I'm like, okay, yeah, I like yeah. live music. Let's go. So, uh, and it was at this point, like fairly recently beforehand, that I was really starting to to develop that relationship with Jesus. I was I was kind of on that cusp of really surrendering, but hadn't really fully surrendered yet. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we're at this concert and. And it's just like God spoke to me, like 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 He was like standing right next to me, mm. and He's like, "I want all of you. Like, yeah, yeah. you're you're giving me a little. Mm. I, I want all. Yeah. And uh, you know, I'm just surrounded by my friends. And I definitely was not a guy who was a, a very responsive. Like, I was I would act crazy at school, but like if you put me in that kind of setting, I'm like, you know, hands in my pockets, very reserved. Yeah, yeah, yeah very yeah. reserved. Yeah. And I just couldn't help it. Like, I just mm. threw my hands up yeah, and yeah. got down on my knees and was just, just singing the song. Mm. That's it. Like, mm. it was probably some bridge or chorus that was just being repeated, but just sang that. And I think we went on for like four or five minutes and I just couldn't stop for yeah. the rest mm. of the night. I couldn't stop at that point. And uh, it, this kind of, in a way, helped, to, helped me to discover what would later be my calling in life because. Mm. Um, one of the teachers who was a sponsor uh, for uh, the FCA group came up to me afterwards and said, thank you for leading me in worship. I was like, oh, what wow. are you talking about? I, I wasn't up there. Yeah. I was down here. She said, yeah, but you led me in worship. Dude, let's go, man. So, That's so good. It's pretty cool. Let me, let me say something on that before I come to you, Clay, because this, this just sparked in my mind a conversation I had last night with a guy who actually, he serves on our worship team, but he wasn't on the platform last night. He was just in the crowd. And, and he was just talking about the response of the people. And, mm. you know, like, 
I, it, I don't know, we just had a great conversation about what happened in the room, but somehow we got onto the subject of how people can lead the church in worship from their seats. Wow. So it's not even just the people on the platform who serve as worship leaders, oh but people in the seats can actually help, help to lead the church in worship when we are gathered together. 100%. And, yeah. and I, shared a story, I shared a story with him, and I'm like, maybe we should do this at Crosspoint. So if you listen and you come to Crosspoint, this is me encouraging and challenging you, okay? But I shared a story with him. I, got, I have a friend who serves on staff at a church in Florida, and they will actually go to people in their congregation who are leading out in worship, okay? So it's not manipulative. They're just looking for people who already lead out in this way that you're talking about, Marcus. And they'll go, hey, um, would you help to be a worship leader for our church? And what they ask people to do is like, hey, would you just sit a little bit closer to the front? Yeah. Would you just maybe fill up, like get here a little early and sit in those first few rows? And would you, from your seat, just help to lead our church in worship of King Jesus? Wow. And so I said to my friend last night, I was like, maybe we just need to start asking people to do that at Cross Point. Yeah. So if you're listening and um, you're one of those people who love to worship, help lead our church in worship by showing up early and sitting up front. I'm sure the three of you would, we would appreciate all that. appreciate that, yeah. right? But, uh, but yeah, we can all serve as worship leaders. Yeah, yeah. I, I can remember, you know, Sundays where there's a few people in the congregation who are leading me in worship. Absolutely. Um, because they are so, you know, just so They're ready. With you. Yeah, they are. And I'm just like, I just, I'm going to watch you the whole time. Yeah. I do it in preaching, Cameron. Yeah. I li when I'm up here preaching, I will find people that I know are locked in with me mm -hmm. and I will just keep going back to them throughout yeah. the sermon. Yeah. And they help me, right? Mm -hmm. Because I know that they're tracking and, and I don't know, it just, it just does something yeah. for your own soul, I think, when you're serving the church, serving yeah. the people of God. So, Absolutely. yeah. Clay, you want to answer that question? Yeah, man? yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, before, before I do, I, yeah. Mark and I were talking about that a little bit ago when on a Sunday morning or a Thursday night or whenever we have our gatherings, yeah. <laughs> there's so much going on in our heads. There's so many things that we're having to, to keep an eye on or to you know, keep tabs yes. on. Um, yeah. There's so many lyrics we have to make sure that we memorize yeah. chord progressions <laughs> and all that stuff. And there are so many times where I can be so focused on the wrong things. Yeah. Mm. And we're in the middle of a song and I just look out and I see a family just worshiping, hands up, eyes closed, just belting it out. Yeah. And it just, it brings it all back. Yeah. You know, wow. And for me, it's, I'm right there with you where it's like, mm -hmm. yes, our people lead me in worship. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Way, way more than I do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. And yeah. so I'm so grateful for that. Yeah. Um, but yes, it, but me thinking back on a, on a moment where I, I couldn't help but cut loose. So <laughs> this was early on in my faith. Uh, this within the first year of, of me surrendering my life to Christ. I was, I was at a church and I, um, the, I was waiting for my opportunity to be in the worship band. So I, lo I loved music. I wanted to be a part of it. Uh, at the time, I was just like running cables and running lines. I was just there. I was like, I'm there if you need me. I'm there. Yep. Um, and I got the call uh, on, a, on a Monday or a Tuesday. Um, and uh, anyway, it's, anyway it, that's, a, that's a story for another day. Uh, the bass player got arrested, and so I ended up getting to play bass. <laughs> okay, um, awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I was just was ne bro. next man up. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so that, that's a story for another day. Um, but so I got my opportunity to play in the band, and, and I remember it was within the first few months. Uh, I was so I was so nervous, yeah. you know. And, and I, it, every, I'm, a, I'm a punk rocker at heart, right? Yeah, so yeah, I just yeah. want to jump and break things and play loud, <laughs> and that's what I want to do. And and I was I was so nervous because I, di I didn't want to hit the wrong notes, and. Yep, it, yep. There was we were playing the song with everything. Oh, by yeah, Hillsong, I remember that right? one. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got the O's. Old so, does. Yeah, yeah. So, Every, people love the O's. They're, yeah. they're the best. Yeah. They're the best. <laughs> so, um, so we're, we're playing with everything, and I, I, I remember feeling, and I, I can still feel it to this day. So this was, I was in. This was in 2009. So this was mm -hmm. a while, while back, and I can still remember the feeling to this day. We're we'd gone through rehearsal. We're in the service. We're playing the song, and. I was, I, my feet were planted. I wasn't moving. And as we're seeing these words of the song with everything, it's like, how, how can I, how can I be playing to this song mm -hmm. and be standing so still and be so stoic and be so focused on the wrong mm -hmm. things. And, and I remember I was like, oh, I, this, this can't, this isn't all there is to it. Mm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so then we're playing the song. There's the big dropout. Then the O's come yeah, in, right? Yeah, really yeah. epic. Just like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's awesome. And 
I, I remember I was we're, we're playing and I'm I kind of I kind of look over at the drummer. He's on a he's on a riser. I look over at the drummer and he kind of looks at me and he has no idea what I'm looking at him for. And and finally I'm like, oh yeah. So, so right before we get to that big drop, I run up. I jump off the drum riser, do a 360 spin, and land <laughs> right as we hit the O's. No and way. in my head, it was perfect on time. I'm sure it wasn't. It, it probably looks so dumb and so sloppy. Uh, I need but to see that. That, that moment, right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that moment for me was, it was like, okay, no, it's on. Like, there, there's, there's no going back yeah, from, yeah. from this moment on. Uh, and I didn't, because I, I was so afraid. I, was, I didn't want to be asked to leave the church. I, I was, I was yeah, so yeah, excited yeah. to be a part of this thing. Yeah, yeah. I was still so new to it. I was trying to take all of it in. And it's that moment. It was like, no, okay, mm-hmm. I'm gonna worship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm laying, I'm laying everything yeah, out. Yeah, wow. And this, this is me. And here he is so. today. And here he is. And here man. I am, sore calves yeah. and all. That's yeah. right. He's jumping around, <laughs> Still smile doing the 360s. on his face. <laughs> no, tear, tear your meniscus <laughs> right. again, man. I, I may have, yeah. oh, got a lot of knee injuries. So <laughs> my, uh, yeah, yeah knee not good. Injuries. That's so good, man. <laughs> Get hurt in worship. I love that. Yeah. I've or shared, I've shared this story with Clay before, but I, I love this. Back during the revival nights earlier this year. My wife was at home one of the nights and she was watching online with my daughters and Clay was leading that night and my eight-year-old daughter, Sayla, she is watching and she looks at my wife and she goes, that guy looks so happy. <laughs> and, and I think a lot of people would say that, you yeah. know, just, just the joy on your face, but That's I just love that. that guy looks so happy. So yeah, just don't lose that. Yeah, um, for sure. I, I think what we're talking about though now, there's a, there's some tension in this that maybe we can address before we go on to the last couple of questions, because I, I do think there's a fine line between not caring what people think mm. and being a distraction. Uh, yeah. And I'm sure we've all been in rooms where the person who's worshiping would say, oh, I just don't care what people think. Mm. No, but in reality, you're being a distraction mm. because what you're doing right now, it's taking attention off of where attention should be, which mm. is on Jesus himself. Yeah. And so I don't know, I'm just curious to hear from you guys, like how, how can people, and maybe you can make it personal, how did you, how do you maintain that balance between like not caring and not being a distraction? Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, for me, it's a lot of prayer. Um, mm. It takes a lot of discernment to like, so, for example, like, when, before I do something on, on the platform, I hear that calling from the Lord before I do it. Um, and that's when I'm like, oh, I got to do that. Like, there, I, there's, no, there's no saying no to that. Um, but I always try to pray for discernment in that moment of, hey, is, is, this, is this best for the moment? Or is this something inside of me that's saying, oh, yeah. I want attention or I want, you know, to be a distraction. And and it's a lot of prayer of like, okay, is this going to amplify the glory of God or is this going to take away from the glory of God? Yeah. That's really good. I love that question. I think for me, uh, I have people on our team ask me sometimes like, Hey, I'm trying to be more energetic, but I feel like Mm. it is distracting. Mm. And at the end of the day, I think it all just boils down to authenticity Mm. because I, I know I can tell, and I feel like most people can probably tell yeah. if you're being authentic or not. Yeah. Absolutely. If you're doing the like if if you're if you're having fun up here while worshiping, if you know, you like I said earlier, are you worshiping like you know the tomb's empty? Yeah. Are you authentically doing that? Yeah, yeah. Um people can tell if you're not. People yeah. can tell if it's like kind of a show for you, right? Absolutely. Like who who you know, you've mentioned it and I've heard this a bunch of times uh from others, just like who you're performing for. Mm. Yeah. Are we prefer- performing for the Lord? Or are we performing for these people down here? That's right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's right. And and people pick up on things. People are a lot smarter than than others give them credit for. Oh, you know? absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. I think it's it's a tough one. It's a tough one because to, they're it's so it's so individual, right? Mm. In from my personal experience, so I as as a punk rocker, like I said earlier, <laughs> as that just being obnoxious and raucous and all that stuff, whatever the words are for that. Like that's, that's something that, that if I'm not careful can really can take over. Mm. And what I've learned in my life is when, cause it's, certainly there've been times where I've been more of a distraction yeah, than yeah. I have, you know, a help. Yep. And what I've learned is how I respond when I get called out for it. Mm. That usually tells me a lot. Mm. And so if somebody if somebody asks, like, hey, so when, when that happened, it was a little bit of a distraction. If I get mad and defensive, <laughs> it probably was. Yeah. Yeah. You know, where, where if, it, if it truly was me responding to something that, no, the spirit is just right. saying, do this. Right. Right. You right. know, right. if that 
my heart, my heart responds very differently yep. to that where it's like, okay, I hear you. Yeah. This is what happened. I, it, it wasn't me. Yeah. You know, I, I was just doing what I was told, yeah. you know, kind of, yeah. kind of thing. But if, if I get, if I get defensive or upset or I kind of feel, I feel attacked, yeah. it, then I, that's where I have to ask the question of, yeah. okay, yeah. Where, where did that really come from? I think yeah. that's a you great know? word, bro. And, and again, it's just a reminder, like what you guys are saying, it's a reminder of how easy it is to place ourselves at mm. the center of our worship. Like even the person that would come into a room like this and throw up hands and sing loud or go down on bended knee, mm. even that person in that moment can be, if they're not careful, placing themselves at the center of their own worship. Mm. Because as I talked about in the sermon this weekend, even that person can care more about what all of these people think than what God thinks. Yeah. And all of that can be a show. Yeah. And it can be about getting eyes on them and not eyes on King Jesus. and. Cameron, I think there's so much value in what you said, like praying, yeah. praying for wisdom and discernment, even in moments of worship to, to just ask the Lord, is this you or is this me? Yeah. Am, am I about to act out in this way because it really is spirit led and mm. this is what will glorify Jesus in this moment? Or am I gonna do this because I'm being selfish? Yeah. And I'm trying to put on a show and I'm trying to impress people or yeah. whatever it is. You know, I just, I think about who the Holy Spirit is, mm. right? And I think a lot of people blame weird stuff on the Holy Spirit. <laughs> they say it's him when it's not him. Yeah. And if you think about the fruit of the Holy Spirit, part of that fruit is self-control. Yeah. And so even in moments of intense worship, the person who is operating in the spirit will not lose control. They, work, they will exercise control Absolutely. by his power. Yeah. And so I think to ask that question is critical. Yeah. Okay, is this me or is it you? Yeah. Well, I think another way to tell is if, if the only time you come before King Jesus oh, is, good, yeah. is at church, mm. more than likely, whatever you're doing is gonna be a distraction. That's come on, good. preach, man. Because yeah. there, there's, so, there's yeah. so much that happens that should be happening on a daily basis. Yep. Yeah. And so if this is the only place where you do those things, where mm. you respond in those physical manners or wh whatever that may be, if this is the only place, you should probably ask the question, yeah. why are you really doing it? Yeah, yeah. if you know. you're not worshiping the same way on the platform or in the congregation as you are at home in private, yeah, yep. like you gotta ask the question, is this, is this who I am? Is this how I worship or is this how I worship in front of people? Yep, yep, that's so good. Yeah, what happens in these rooms when we gather, should be an overflow yes. of what's happening in our lives throughout the rest of the week, yeah. right? Yeah. Like when we come in here, man, whatever whatever location we attend, like that should be us pouring out our gratitude in response to what has happened mm. Monday through Saturday, or if you're a Thursday person, yeah. Friday through Wednesday, <laughs> yes. you know? And uh, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I like what you said about, you know, just you know, the, the spirit allowing us to exercise control and I just thought about, and this probably goes, you probably feel the same way about this when teaching the word, but this, for, for worship leaders who might be watching this, do you really understand the weight that you know, we as God's creation, like our purpose is to, to, to love him, to worship him, to glorify him, how amazing it is that we all, God has gifted us, has skilled us, and anointed us to lead people in what their purpose is. Yeah, yeah. So, how are you stewarding that time yeah, that yeah. we're doing this is, is so important to, to think about. So mm. like if, like you said, like if, if, are we putting this time on ourselves? Are we, are yeah. we glorifying him and making more of him during this? Yeah, yeah. So that's so good, man. Mm. You know, as I was, as I was prepping for the podcast, I just started thinking back over the course of my life. And a lot of people don't know this about me, but I was, I was a worship teacher leader at one point in my life. So I, I started playing in bands at 16 and played music for a lot of years and did the whole worship thing for a lot of years. I haven't done it in a lot of years. And so um, I don't even own a guitar anymore, man. So if you asked me to do it today, it'd be- We can hook you up. We'll I, would you need yeah, to, we I would you. need to reform some calluses and <laughs> yeah. shake off a lot of vocal rust. But I, I was just thinking back on significant worship moments that really shaped me. Mm -hmm. And I was sharing with you before we, we jumped on the podcast about a moment years ago, and this was when I was still playing in, in the rock band, you know, and we said we were a Christian rock band 
questionable in ways, you know, <laughs> at least for some of the guys in the band, but Christian rock band. <laughs> but I remember we were playing this concert one night at a little church in the middle of nowhere. And it was the place, like, we pulled up, and I was like, dude, there's going to be boxes of snakes inside. It was that kind of place. So we go in, we get all set up, and the place was just packed out with people. And we had a song that we wrote. We kind of buried it in the middle of the set list, you know, when we did it. And, and there was a little talk that I gave before we played the song. It was really low-key, introspective. And I'll just never forget, we, we, we played the song. I did my talk, and we played the song. And, man, I look up at the end of the song, and people are just, like, on their faces. Mm. And we're, we're looking, because we, we got the rest of our set list to play, you know. And we're looking at each other going, what do we do? And, man, we just started playing worship songs, like mm -hmm. praise songs, yeah. old-school worship praise songs. And I kid you not, man, it was like two hours of that. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the set list went out the window, and I just remember like walking away from that night going, I don't know if I've ever experienced an outpouring of the Holy Spirit like that in my life. I was just a Southern Baptist kid, you know. I'd, mm -hmm. I wasn't used to moments like that, but I, I walked away, and it was like we, we got a taste of heaven mm -hmm. in that room that night. And it just forever shaped the way that I thought about worship and even approached worship. And so I just wanted to ask you, have you, have you had any moments like that over the course of your life that you just walked away from and it was like something just shifted in me as a mm. worshiper? Not even just uh, somebody who leads others in music, but as a worshiper of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Have you ever had a moment like that? Clay, you're laughing, man. It, Clay. I, oh yeah, oh yeah, I have a few, but for the sake of time, I'll try to keep it condensed. Uh, so there, uh, one of the, the biggest things for me, so being from the Northwest Georgia area, um, Bible Belt country, right? Yep. So um, Rome is, uh, you know, I don't know, I'll say small town. Some people may disagree, whatever. It's yeah. small town mindset at the very yeah, least. Yeah. We'll say that. And so a lot of people and a lot of churches are uh, full of multi-generational families. And so, yeah. and a lot of people go to, go to certain churches because that's where their, their parents went and their grandparents went and so on and so forth. And, and also that with us being in this, in this area, it's not as uncommon to hear people talk about Christianity. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's just not, it, it's, it's a little more normal, yeah, right? Yeah. So um, right after my wife and I got married, we moved to uh, right outside Boulder, Colorado. Okay. And we loved it. It was beautiful. I, I love mountains. And so yeah, just yeah. Uh, getting to drive towards the mountains every day, going to work, <laughs> beautiful. Um, but there, it's not that way. <laughs> so right, it, right, it is right, not right. not cool. It is yep. not anywhere near accepted um, to, be, to be a Christ follower. And so I was working at a community college, and we would have, you know, stu the student body, they, they would want different, different organizations to be represented, that kind of thing. And, uh, but anytime we had any kind of, uh, Christian or Christian adjacent, we'll say, <laughs> organizations yeah. show up, uh, just pandemonium would break out. Students would want, like, no, we don't want this. We don't want that at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was the only type of group the students didn't want there. And so that really opened our eyes. Like, okay, this is, this is where we are. Yeah, um, yep, yep. And so there was a church we found out there. And just from the, the very first Sunday, we walked into this church, you could tell something was different mm. than any other church we've been to in the past where... <laughs> People weren't there because it was normal or cool or their routine. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it was the opposite. It was not cool to be there. Yeah, so yeah. every single person that was in that room wanted to be there. Mm. Uh, and that was, so that area, there's a lot of transplants. So a lot of, a lot of people from moved, have, you know, moved from other cities. And so there's not a lot of deep family ties there either. And so there were no, there were no family ties. There were no, oh, just cultural, this is just accepted or normal or whatever. Yeah. People were there because they wanted to worship Jesus. Yeah. yeah. And so the very first service there, just hearing people sing, mm -hmm. it, it was a different kind of sing even, yeah, you know, because yeah. when, when you really mean something, mm -hmm. it sounds different than when you're oh, just going yeah. through the motions, yeah. you know, and not yep. to say that people are going through the motions, you know, in, in this area, sure. but to hear a, an entire room full of people who just wanted to be there, wanted to make much of Jesus. Mm -hmm. What it was, it was life changing yeah. for us. Yeah. We're like, mm -hmm. Oh no, this is what church should be like. Yeah, okay. Powerful, and man. so for us, that, that shifted everything that's so for good. us. Yeah. That's so good. I love yeah. that. Yeah. What did you say? You said when, when you, when you mean something, it sounds different. Yeah. That's so good. Man. Yeah. You can, when somebody's that's, passionate about something, somebody needs you to, can tell. Somebody needs to tweet that. Yeah. Somebody needs, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. That's right so now. Good. <laughs> if I can, if I can remember my Twitter login, there you I'll, go. I'll, I'll log in. Twitter Twitter yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stay off Twitter, man. There's just, yeah. Yeah. Too, too, too much craziness on Twitter. Um, 
I always think about this one night. So I grew up, you know, my parents led worship, and I get to lead worship with my dad, which is awesome yeah. still to this day. But Papa um, Brandon, Papa Come Brandon, on, man. love that guy. Uh, Grandpapa Brandon. Oh, that's so crazy, <laughs> isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Um, Wait, are you pregnant? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I grew up, you know, leading worship with my dad, and I didn't really think that that was what I was going to do with my mm. voice. I loved doing it with my dad, but I kind of assumed. Once I get out of the house, I'll, I don't know, go record an album or go live in Nashville or something and, yeah. and do that. And that was kind of the trajectory I was on in my early teenage years, um, you know, meeting with people, trying to write music and trying to get all these opportunities. And I was never motivated. I was never passionate about it. Mm. And I always wondered why. I was like, I don't know. This is what I'm supposed to do. This is what everyone says I'm supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, my sister had this opportunity or she's created this uh, young adults uh, worship night. Um, she was going to lead it and all that stuff. And she asked me to, to lead the worship for it. And that had been the first kind of stepping out of my own worship experience. And I never had experienced worship like that, mm. where I got to dance around and sing and um, lead worship in that way. And I remember talking to my dad immediately, you know, the next day I was like, I know what I'm supposed to do with my voice. Mm. The Lord has told me, he told me in that moment, this is why I gave you your voice so good. is to use it for worship and to use it in for my kingdom. Yeah. And, you know, from then on, I was like, I'm not doing anything else but worship. And that was, you know, I went the other way, but yeah. that was, you know, the moment where I realized, you know, God and my voice are not separate. Like mm. they're not two mm. separate things. Like That's he, good. he gave me my voice and he wants me to use it for him. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. I love that. I've got a more recent, more recent Come on. Uh, I love it. tale. Okay. Um, so recently we have uh, been able to start, start writing songs that have been just birthed out of just response to what God's doing here yep. at Cross yep. Point City. And it is a different experience from when there's songs that you've been a part of writing out of that response that have been written out of this house. Yeah. And you hear the people that you do life with, people in your congregation that you see every week and sometimes even multiple times a week, yeah. singing the songs that 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 were written out of the words that God gave you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it just, I don't know, I just, I'm just grateful just to be a part of something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and because uh, I, I know some people on our team have done that, but this, it was really the first time that um, had written something and it had gone that far, yeah, so to speak. So, That's so um, it, it's just been amazing to see and hear people. Uh, we've got two songs, right? Raining yeah. Majesty, which was sung at Night of Worship last night. And as soon as you started singing that chorus at the oh, front, yeah. it was just yeah, just a roar of sound. That yeah. it was, so happy. I was like, yeah. man, that is people know this song. Know. Oh my it's gosh, so well. and they I love it. This is so cool. So, here's the deal you just got to keep doing it, all yeah, right? Yeah. Like, Amen. yeah, yeah. No, no pressure, but keep writing songs, okay? <laughs> no, I love it, man. Well, as, long, as long as you even love our bad songs, too. We'll, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the important thing. Uh, I, 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 you, haven't, you haven't let me hear a bad one yet, so anyway, <laughs> that's good. All right, here's where I want to end, and we're going to do this rapid-fire style, okay? Um, so just quick answers, and we can go just kind of popcorn style, okay? So here's what I want to ask. Um, where do you find new songs for our people? I, th I think for me, it's it's from friends, other friends okay. in the community and just uh, seeing some, uh, I watch a few of my friends live stream from the churches that they're at and seeing okay. what they're doing. And, and sometimes you hear some pretty banger okay. stuff, man. It's All right. Pretty great. Love yeah. that. Yeah. Spotify makes some great playlists. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Their yeah. generated stuff is really good. And also, so we use Planning Center for our scheduling and that kind of thing. Yep, yep. They have uh, the, the top songs that have been scheduled uh, on okay. a weekly basis. So you can go and see, you can yeah, see all that. the, yeah, it's crazy. That's so it's cool. so helpful. So yeah. to me, I love being able to see like how songs are trending. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah. It's, you know, it's just like, okay, this song's been number one for like 47 weeks. We should <laughs> probably should start probably singing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think there's something about the, the big C church seeing the same songs yeah, together. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's I would also say multi-tracks. Like they send an email out. Whenever they get new tracks from okay. an artist, it says this new single from this person, we've got Love these that. tracks available for you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let me hit you with the next one. What, what bands are you listening to right now the most? Worship bands, I assume. Uh, I guess so. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Just don't say anything heretical yeah. and we'll be okay. Yeah. 
I got to scratch. All, no, uh, I'm, I'm a huge Chris McClarney fanboy. Okay, I, I love right. Chris McClarney. Okay. So any, anything he does to me yeah. is is gold. Um, his voice is oh, it's, stupid yeah. good. Yes. Yeah. 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 So so Church of the City is, is one yeah, of the churches yeah, yeah. he's at. So yeah, yeah it's uh, yeah. Okay. So, it, it's my, one of my go tos is always like the the Phil Wickham sing along mm. sessions. Okay. So yeah. it's and it's all of them. So like mid two thousands Wickham to today, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. I just. Or his, his new song, Hymn of Heaven. That's so good. So yeah. good. So good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Cameron? Um, you know, I love some good classic Hill song, but I've been listening to a lot of um, Upper Room stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I love. I mean, they always take classic songs and they just, you know, they make them really yeah. good. So. so good. Yeah. An album I've been wearing out recently is the new Shane and Shane. Yeah. So yeah, good. I like they got, Shane They got Shane. some great songs mm-hmm. on that album, man. So good. Yeah. I know we're going to be introducing one of theirs from the album soon. Yeah. You've yeah. Already, I'm really, you've you've won. already won. Come yeah. on. So, so excited good. for that. Yeah. yeah. It's good. So good. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of leading us into this next one. Are there any songs, specific songs, that are just like go to for you right now? Mm. Just on repeat. Oh, yeah. For me, it's Take You at Your Word. I mean, it's this one oh, we just so introduced. Good. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like going back to me, just want to jump around and break stuff. Dude, that, <laughs> yeah. there's the line in the song, there's a narrow road, it leads to life, and I want to be on it. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's so good. That that line, it, yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Brad, we, we sang that yesterday in our gatherings, and Brad Chandler, Pastor Brad, leaned over me at one point and said, like, dude, I really like this song. Mm-hmm. I think it's like the second week we've sang yeah, it, right? Yeah. And, and, uh, but it's a great one. What about yeah. you guys? Go to go to uh, songs. Ladies so first. I'd say worthy. Um, that's Hill song, and all hail King Jesus. Oh, I mean, I love. One. That's one of those songs I just listen to all the time. Listen, and man, I cry. don't get me started on that. I was. <laughs> we've talked a lot about that song recently in, in some meetings we've been in. Today I was in my office and I'm prepping for my sermon this weekend, where we are talking about the triumphal entry. Mm-hmm. All right. And all of these people are coming out. They've heard about Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. And he's coming to Jerusalem. And they're out there with their palm branches. And they're shouting Hosanna. And blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. Mm -hmm. And I'm prepping the sermon. And I stopped and I turned on that song in my office. Mm -hmm. Because that's all I could think about was like, this this was what was happening in this moment. Is Mm -hmm. these people are declaring. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't even know fully what they're declaring. But this is what they're declaring. Yeah. All hail King. Mm. So good. That, and those so verses, good. those verses are powerful too. Oh, I mean, crazy it's, it's good. Crazy the gospel good. story yeah. and that, oh my gosh, and that bridge. Yeah. It's all so good. <laughs> what about you, bro? Uh, I've got two. And uh, so first one would be in no particular order. Uh, I speak Jesus mm. is on replay. Mm. It's so good. That is a good one. So especially that bridge, Jesus in the morning, yep. Jesus yep. in yep. the yep. streets. Yep. Whew, so good. And then the second one, uh, I, I've just fallen in love with this song for about a year, and I can't stop listening to it. But it's uh, uh was it Brandon Funk and uh, you better say Son of Suffering. I am. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> Matt Redman, Son of yeah. Suffering. Gosh, I don't know if I know that one. Ooh, I'll send okay. it to you. I need to go look I'm, that one up. I also don't know that one, and people are shocked by okay. that. So, Gosh, All right, well, they we got to go. They busted out at Lyft go last year. Yeah, dude, Rome, Lyft. crazy. Oh yeah. Son of, okay. Yeah. I got to go check that one out. Yeah. yeah. All right. Very good. All right. So, hey, here are some songs to add to your playlist for all of you who are listening. There we go. Um, all right. Finally, 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 maybe just one of you can speak to this. How can people who are listening right now, who are part of Cross Point City Church and who are gifted musically, vocally, whatever, and who've just been kind of sitting on the sidelines, not really involved in ministry, if they want to, to audition to maybe join the worship team, how do they do that? What is, what's the first step to get started in the process? Yeah, so first, I will say, no matter what you believe, we are always looking for more. We're always. Yes. We're always. never full. It may yeah. look like we have everybody we need. We don't. Yeah. Yes. We do not. <laughs> yeah, we are, we are always, always onboarding new musicians, new vocalists, new yeah. production team members. Yeah, because um, yeah. Yeah, the, the ministry is much bigger than just the Sunday morning adult gathering. Yeah. There's it so is. many other ministries that, that, that we have musicians for. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, really, the, the easy practical steps. There's a serve app on our website. And so, um, slash serve, I yep. believe is the yep. link. If I'm 
remembering no, off the top are, of my head. You are correct. There we yes. go. Okay. Yep, yep. Ah, yes. Whew. So, uh, so go to crosspointcity.com slash serve, and then uh, you can fill out the serve app there. Okay. Uh, if you're at any of our locations, come talk to us. Yeah. Yep. You know, yep. we, th- that's one of my favorite things, getting to meet new people and just yeah. hear their story. And hear, that's when you're talking about like, how do we find new songs, I agree with you. Like, people just giving it, people just coming up talking. Yeah. People yeah. coming up and talking to us. Yeah. There we go. Yep. Yeah. Is, is right. incredible. So, yeah. 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 Well, and, and hopefully, uh, those of those people who are listening know that you're normal people now <laughs> after you've been on the podcast today, <laughs> that they can come and talk to you. Yes, and, yes, please do. <laughs> and I would say, yeah, come come and talk to them on a Sunday or a Thursday. Yeah, go to the app, go to the website. Yeah. Man, we'd love to to help you figure out how you can be part of the team. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, hey, this has been fun. Yeah. Appreciate you guys time. joining us on the podcast, joining me on the podcast, I should say. Usually it's like me and one other guy in the room. So uh, mm-hmm. this has been a lot of fun, but mm-hmm. I think that's a great place to wrap it up. Uh, let me say to those of you who are listening, if you have questions about the sermon, the scriptures, or faith in general, please send those to us by email. You can DM us on our social sites, or you can text the word question to 22722. Thank you again for listening to The Pursuit. For more information about our church or this podcast, you can visit us online, crosspointcity.com, or you can follow us on your favorite social media platforms. If you enjoyed this podcast, please consider subscribing, leaving a five-star review, and sharing it with a friend. But no matter what, know that we love you, we're here for you, and we'll see you next week.